Okay, why don't we go ahead and get started. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Mike McBride. We'll have a few more students joining us here soon, I'm sure. And, and, um, and welcome to our EPICS informational session with, uh, with Josh Lohman. And I'll, I'll let Josh uh, take it from here. And, and I'll be monitoring the Q&A for, for the team. And, um, and we've got some of our terrific students with us too. I'm sure Josh will be talking about, about them and them about themselves. I hope to hear shortly. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. So welcome to the EPICS informational session. We'll talk a little bit about this really amazing program that you can do some human-centered design and make an impact on your community. So as Mike said, my name is Joshua Lohman. I'm a lecturer within the Fulton Schools. I am one of the three directors, one of the three co-directors of the Engineering Projects and Community Service Program. I'm also a senior sustainability scientist with the Global Institute of Sustainability and Innovation. And I've been uh, in this role for about uh, coming up on six years. And prior to that, my background was in the private sector. I worked for 10 years in the space industry. So we've got uh, some great uh, student panel today that have uh, done some, some work with the EPICS program. So I'll have them quickly introduce themselves and maybe which project they were on. And they were going to talk more in depth uh, about that uh, towards the end of the presentation. Adriana? Hi everyone, my name is Adriana Gonzalez. I am a senior in engineering management and I'm also getting a minor in sustainability. And I have done two semesters of EPICS. Unfortunately, I was not able to do it again because of the pandemic and a bunch of other things happening. But both of those semesters, I was in two different projects. One had to do with the um, ASU uh, Noble Library and the other had to do with um, a solar district hub project that it was sort of a competition. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to go more in depth with that later, but yeah. Thanks, Adriana. Adessa? Hi, everyone. My name is Adessa Cervantes, and I am a sophomore in computer science. I am on my third semester of uh, EPICS, and I am a part of the 33 Buckets Internet of Things team, where we try and find ways to clean water to communities or to rural communities. Thank you, and Lucy. Hi, my name is Lucy. I'm a senior studying biomedical engineering and I am the team lead of the 33 Bucket Sensor Development Team. So we actually work in conjunction with Edessa's team um, to provide clean water to rural communities. Terrific, thank you. Okay, so what is the EPICS program? The EPICS program is a design-based service learning program in which student teams will work with real community partners to solve real community needs. All of our projects have some community partner or social benefit associated with them. And every project has some technical, uh, whether it's design or engineering or data analysis, some technical components uh, with it as well. Now, while the name uh, does have engineering in the title, uh, engineering projects and community service, we do uh, also uh, want to make as multidisciplinary as we can our teams. And so we are open to non-engineering majors, uh, even non-Fulton majors. And so we try to get as diverse a, a, a group of teams as we can. So how do you get involved in the program? Well, there's two courses right now that we offer within the EPICS program. The first course is FSE 104, Introduction to EPICS. This is a course in which you'll do two things. The first thing is you will learn the basics of human-centered design. You'll learn the basics of how to work on an EPICS project. The other thing that you'll, you'll do is you'll actually work on an EPICS project. So all of our teams have students that, are, uh, that, are, that span both of these courses. So students from the introductory course, but also students from the, the 404 course. So once you've taken FSC 104, every semester after that, you'll take another one credit course, which is FSC 404. This is called Epics in Action. And you can take this course as many times as you, as you want. I think uh, Lucy and I were talking, she's probably taken this course three times now, um, if you've been in the program for four semesters. And so instead of doing a kind of in-class learning experience, the FSC 404 experience is entirely project-based. So the whole time you are in FSC 404, your, your uh, work that you do for that class is going to be based on your project. Now we do have opportunities for you to do just in time learning. And what we mean by that is we provide on the order of 50 to 60 different skill sessions every 
uh, semester. Tomorrow morning, I'll be teaching a skill session on systems thinking. And so for those of you who, you know, if you were in the EPICS program and we, we do offer these programs beyond just EPICS students as well, and you were interested in systems thinking, you could just jump into that one hour skill session time and learn about the sort of basics of, of systems mapping and systems thinking. Um, other kinds of uh, skill sessions that we've offered in the past, uh, leadership, entrepreneurship, basic fabrication and making, uh, principles of sustainability, healthcare design, we bring in people who have 30 years in industry and talk about their lesson, lessons learned. We talk about engineering ethics and many, many, many other um, things. So each of these classes is a one credit class, which means that you know, every one credit should be about three hours a week of work. So being in the EPICS program is roughly three hours a week of work. This, this week, it happens to be design review week. So it might be closer to four or five hours to prepare for those design reviews. But on the order, uh, one credit class is a pretty standard um, time commitment for what we do. Okay, so how do you join? If you're an undergraduate ASU student and you're in uh, engineering, then you can sign up for FSC 104 without any problems. If you're outside of engineering, um, you, can, you can still sign up for 104, you just need to get an override. And then to get into 404, you take 104 or we have a couple of what we call alternate pathways. So if you're a junior and senior and never took 104 or if you are on kind of a special program or you did EPIC's high school program, you can get directly into the FSC 404 program. So I already kind of mentioned FSC 104 is lecture only plus the project and FSC 404 purely project-based learning. Okay, so I put this flyer together this morning. And so this is all of our uh, course enrollments for next semester for the fall. So we have, uh, what is this? Uh, eight different 104 sections that span uh, you know, a wide range of times and days and a, a wide range of 404 times as well. So um, we'll, I will uh, share this with, uh, I'll share the PDF with Mike and he can distribute it to uh, all the attendees for this and maybe put it on your website uh, as well. Okay, so within EPICS, there are four different themes that our projects fall into. We work with community partners that do work in sustainability, that do work in health and accessibility, also education and community development. Now, lots of projects fall into more than one category, which is fine, but all of our projects check at least one of these boxes. It is either a project in sustainability, health, education, and or community development. And I'll give a couple of examples later of some specific projects that we're working on. And I know the students will, uh, will talk about their projects as well. So what makes the EPICS program different from something that you would experience uh, on one of our campuses, um, whether it's the online campus, the Polytechnic campus, Tempe campus, or anywhere where you're doing engineering work, you're, you're gonna be working on real projects. So these projects are the, the real challenges that a community partner somewhere in the world has. About 70% of our projects are local, 30% of, of our projects are international, but they're all with some kind of partnership. Now, that means that it can be quite challenging because with real problems, we don't know what the answers are yet. I don't have the answer. Uh, our students don't know what the answers are. Our community partners don't know what the answers are. We have to really put our, our minds to work to try and create some real solutions. Now, one of the ways that we do that, one of the ways that we really help and assist our teams to do that is with industry mentors. All of the teams have an industry uh, subject matter expert that is their coach. And so you'll have your faculty member, you'll have a TA, and you'll also have this what we call an academic associate who will be your industry coach for your project. And they're selected based on <clears throat> their, uh, their area of expertise matching up with, their, uh, with your project. Each semester, our teams also get a, a minimum amount of $300 of seed funding to help them develop their prototypes, to help them to, uh, you know, to do site visits or travel or, or data collection. And then we have up to um, you know, many times that uh, depending on the project. So we have uh, quite a bit of resources for projects that are about to deliver or that need to do uh, a more intense uh, site visit, let's say, or, or other things. We also are highly connected to uh, entrepreneurship type opportunities, whether it's social entrepreneurship or 
uh, you know, conventional uh, business uh, development, venture development. And so teams have often, um, they get quick access to those opportunities and we try to get them out to those opportunities so that they can spin off a company or spin off a nonprofit um, if, they, if that idea really warrants it. Uh, I mentioned the skill sessions. We now use some of the skill sessions as a kind of extra credit. So for the 404 class, you can take a one credit or a two credit version. The two credit version, you, you're spending a little bit more time and some of that extra time is with additional skill sessions. Um, of course, it's a lot of fun to be in Epics and it's a lot of fun to have an impact on the community. And so uh, a lot of the reasons why students join the program is because they wanna have a real and direct an immediate impact on the communities that they're from or that they wanna serve or that they see as uh, having a need. Another thing, and this is kind of a, one that we've, we've really tried to manage carefully over the last couple of years and certainly with, with, with COVID and, and the uh, kind of Zoom enabled um, world that we're living in, all of our teams have um, senior students, not necessarily seniors, but students who have been in Epics at least one semester so that they can coach the new students who are joining the program. So we have this student mentor mentee relationship of vertical integrated teams, teams that have students that are, that are freshmen all the way up through sometimes graduate students. And so having that access to students who've been in your program for a year or two or three, be able to say, hey, this is a really great class, you should take this as your elective, or this is a really, you know, Maybe you should avoid this class, or you know the, the different kinds of tacit knowledge that students gain just by being students. You will be able to have access to that kind of mentor relationship. So, we really focus on a bias towards action, and what we mean by that is we want to have a real impact. Our projects are designed to be educational for the students. They're designed to kind of achieve the goals of our program, but they're really designed to have an impact in the world. That can be a small impact or it can be a really big impact. And we'll talk a little bit about some, some of the projects and, and the impacts that they're having. Another thing that a bias towards action really um, forces us to, to do is prototype. Now, oftentimes when I, when I tell students, you should develop a prototype, they think of the Tesla model that's at the new car show, that's the prototype. Like, okay, yeah, sure, we call that a prototype, but that's not the type of prototyping that I'm talking about. I'm talking about really, really early stage building things, crude models all the way up through that idea of a really sophisticated prototype. And we call that uh, thinking by making. And so when you make things, when you're really actually building it, you're, you're thinking about things in a way that you can't just do on paper or on a computer or just in your mind. And so that thinking by making is a way of problem solving that is often not taught as much in engineering as it is say in the design school. And so the EPICS program is really influenced a lot by both uh, engineering and uh, design principles. <clears throat> I mentioned multidisciplinarity a little bit earlier and uh, we really take that to heart, not just with our teams. Our teams are made up of really diverse students from all kinds of different backgrounds, but our teams are also connected to the rest of the sort of innovation and social ecosystems of ASU and of our, of our broader community. And so this is a picture of uh, Changemaker Central, which is a, a place in the, in the MU, the Memorial Union, where our students interact with students from all kinds of other majors to uh, do brainstorming sessions, to do rapid prototyping sessions, to do all kinds of other creative activities. And so we have this really collaborative culture where we want to work with all kinds of uh, organizations and, and people that want to work with us. Okay, so I mentioned this week's design review week. So what are design reviews? Once or twice a semester, depending on the, the semester and depending on the project that you're on, you will do a design review. And what we do is we bring in a bunch of experts from industry, other faculties, uh, maybe some graduate students, definitely a lot of community partners that we've worked with in the past. We bring them into a conference room. You give a 15 minute presentation, generally updating us uh, and them on the progress of your, of your uh, work. Um, it's multi-semester projects. So uh, 
we were talking a little before the webinar started, you know, what's the right amount of semesters for a project? It's really dependent on the project. We've had some projects that have been just one semester, but most projects are two or three or sometimes five or six. It really depends on the project and it depends on the kind of intensity and where it goes, how much returning to the drawing board do we have to do? And design reviews are a way for us to really connect with those different experts out there in the world. I'm, I'm expert in a lot of things, but I'm not expert in everything. And so uh, bringing in people with fresh eyes to look at a project and say, I think you're on the right track, but you need to do this um, is a great opportunity. Another really great opportunity that, that design reviews present is most of the people that we bring in are senior engineers and sometimes hiring managers. And so this is an opportunity for you as students to really crystallize your, uh, your communication, your public speaking skills, but also to create the network with the kinds of industries that you want to work with when you graduate. And that, that can start your first semester as a freshman. Doesn't have to wait to the end. Okay, so we've covered a lot of these already, but <clears throat> just to kind of recap some of the additional benefits that students get by being in the EPICS program. You get to develop that engineering skill from, the, from day one, but you're also developing really critical soft skills, uh, communication, project management, com uh, the ability to sort of ask uh, a, a community partner or a client what they really need. Um, it's really something that a lot of programs don't get to until they're capstone. And so, uh, and, and I think this is probably the, the one thing that students really come back and say, you know, of all the classes that I, I took, this is the class that really prepared me the most for an internship, a job, graduate school, uh, in a lot of cases, uh, you know, your professional career. And so um, you get to work on uh, uh, projects that really can help you leverage those projects to get internships, research experiences, and so on. A lot of students have uh, the same capstones on their resume as the next student, right? If you're a mechanical engineer or a computer science uh, major, you're gonna have a lot of the same projects. Epics, every project's really unique. So you will have one really unique thing on your resume that is extremely valuable. Um, number three, the EPICS program counts as a technical elective for many of the Fulton programs. So you'll need to take three credits. It says three semesters, but that's only if you're doing the one credit version of 404, but three semesters of 404 and you, you can check off your technical elective. This is also true of Barrett. <clears throat> so 104 and 404 are automatic honors. And uh, so if you're in the Barrett Honors College, uh, this can count as one of your honors credits as well. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's really different from a lot of the coursework uh, because of the real projects and the real impact that, that you can have. Um, and then finally, the, the relationships that you build, the uh, friendships and the ability to get a mentor from a, an existing student really early on is extremely valuable. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to talk just about a couple of projects that have been doing some really amazing work. Uh, we have 55 projects, uh, actually probably more like 60 projects this semester with, um, you know, nearly 400 students. So um, this is, it's, these are just a couple of the many projects that we have. So we, we've been working with the Phoenix Zoo for a few years now. Um, this project is working with uh, some elephants to develop a a program for them to get some exercise. So <clears throat> they've created basically an elephant Simon game. If you're not familiar with the Simon game, it's a flashing lights and you have to complete the sequence. Well, this is a, a Simon game for elephants. So it's obviously a lot more robust than the, than the game from the 80s. Um, but uh, it's also a, a way for them to have fun and play and get some exercise. And this team has been doing a lot of different kinds of prototyping from electronics prototyping, mechanical prototyping, and a lot of 3D CAD modeling. Okay, another really great project. So uh, this is the uh, Mayo Clinic radiology project. And so Mayo Clinic is a, is a major uh, research hospital, research enterprise. Um, it's based in Minneapolis, I think, uh, but they have, a, they have a location here as well and ASU and the Mayo Clinic have a partnership. <clears throat> and so one of the problems that they identified in their radiology department was 
they have this chest x-ray device, but in order to get a chest x-ray, you have to stand. Well, if you need a chest x-ray, there's a good chance that you aren't the best at standing either. And so uh, they, they have a number of injuries and falls and incidents because of the way in which this technology is organized. And so the students have been working now for a, a few semesters on developing a technology, developing a design solution that would allow uh, patients to either remain seated or to be assisted in the, uh, you know, you can't just sit in the wheelchair because the metal will obstruct the, the x-ray. So these are sort of x-rayable wheelchairs that they're designing in order to prevent these falls. Really terrific uh, pair of projects. Um, <clears throat> a couple of other things I just want to throw out before I let the students, uh, well, I'll, I'll talk about one other thing after this and then I'll let the students talk about their projects. But uh, EPICS is part of the Fulton Difference programs and it's also deeply connected with a lot of these other programs as well. So FURY applications for students uh, all, you know, already in the program, Fulton Undergraduate Research Initiative, um, those applications are due next week. We have a whole lot of EPICS students that do FURY research based on their EPICS project. And so it's a really great opportunity to get paid to do research, get one-on-one -on -one faculty mentoring with me or one of the other two co-directors, but also continue to make progress on your really important EPICS project. Grand Challenge Scholars Program is another really terrific um, uh, program that we are deeply connected with. So if you're part of the Grand Challenge Scholars Program, one of the things you need to, uh, to do to complete that program is service learning. Well, design-based service learning in the EPICS program counts as service learning for GCSP. It also, we have a study abroad. I think I'm gonna talk about that on the next slide. We have a study abroad that counts as your global component for GCSP. Um, we're, we're deeply connected with Barrett. So we are developing right now a thesis pathway course within EPICS. So if you are a Barrett student and you are in EPICS, you can do your Barrett thesis on your EPICS project. And uh, so that's a really great opportunity to kind of get two boxes checked kind of with the same pro project. You do a little more work to do the thesis, but it's the same project. Um, we work really heavily with entrepreneurship and innovation. Many of our teams go on to start nonprofits, social enterprises, or ventures. Um, we work very closely with the Office of Social Embeddedness. We're also connected with the Next Generation Service Corps. So if you're part of the Next Generation Service Corps, EPICS helps to check some of your boxes there as well. Okay, I think this is the last one. So we have, this is a, pictures on the left here from 2019. So we did our first uh, human-centered design global intensive experience. That's what GIE stands for. So students work on a project collaboratively with students in Vietnam. We then travel to Vietnam for 10 days and do field work. We did an international design review. Uh, we did a lot of data collection. We did some rapid prototyping and we uh, were able to really develop a, a, not just a great project, but we were able to develop the project in the context of really being in the environment that the project was going to be deployed in, which is really helpful. And so uh, last year we were not able to go um, because of the pandemic, but we are currently um, on track to offer a winter 2021 study abroad back to Vietnam for 10 days. So students who are in the EPICS program in the fall of 2021 are qualified to uh, register, you know, to sign up for this as well. So um, kind of keep your eyes open for that. We don't have an application open for that yet, but um, we, uh, yeah, keep your eyes open for that. Okay, so good, 25 minutes, I'm on track. Uh, so I'll go ahead and, and pass it over to the students now to talk a little bit about themselves and about the projects and their experience in the EPICS program. Thank you, Josh. So hi, I already said this, but my name is Adriana Gonzalez. Just, um, I'm just gonna really quickly go over my slide and then talk about my projects in EPICS. So um, my major is engineering management and I'm a senior in it. I'm also getting a minor in sustainability and I am from the city of Chihuahua, Mexico. So um, part of the, when, what I've been involved in on campus, um, it has been Fulton Ambassadors. 
Uh, the Student Organization for Industrial Engineers, which is for also engineering medicine is included there. A Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. Uh, this semester, I am an undergraduate teaching assistant and of course, EPICS. I'm not currently in EPICS, but I did EPICS for two semesters. I started doing EPICS in my sophomore year. And the reason why I didn't start in my freshman year is because I didn't know about it. If I had known about EPICS in my freshman year, I would have definitely started. And it is something that I always recommend students to do as part of my Fulton Ambassadors um, actions. So yeah, now I want to talk about my projects real quick. So my first project, as I mentioned earlier, it had to do with the um, one of the main libraries on campus. I think earlier I said Noble Library, but it was, it was actually Hayden Library. I apologize for that. So Hayden Library came to us, Epic students, with a bunch of uh, things that they wanted to implement. One of them was creating a display, a functional display for the Territorial Cup for whenever we don't have the cup, which doesn't happen <laughs> that often, but when we don't have it, um, so that this the display could do another function other than just a display and not just be um, wasted space. That was not my project, though. I'm just mentioning some of the projects. My project was that the Hayden Library wanted to increase the number of board game checkouts because they have a huge collection of board games of over 300 board games, if I remember correctly, that not many students know about. So it was my team and my responsibility to come up with a plan to get those board games out there, basically. And what we were working on, we had to come up with um, an innovative display that would catch people's attention, but that would also be functional. We had a bunch of um, requirements to meet. It had to be functional. It had to be um, set up for like for it to be moved from one location to another. It had to be durable, a bunch of different things. That project was when I was taking the 104 class. So I think it was perfect because I was first introduced to the uh, human centered design process. And that project was actually perfect for the for that because we were actually working on like a physical product that was to be used for, by humans, right? So that was my first project. And then my the second semester that I did Epics was the semester right after that. And the reason why I changed my project is because I I came to realize that I wanted to focus more on sustainability and I wanted to do something that would um direct me more toward that because that's what I want to focus my career on. So my second project was a competition called the Solar District Cup. And it's it's a national competition, but Epix has it as one of their projects. So for that, we were working on, um, I think this was a bit of a different project than all of the other Epix projects because it was more, the purpose of this competition was for students to become familiar with solar, solar engineering, solar energy, any, anything related to solar, and for us to come to an understanding of how it works and what we can do with it. So we were assigned to a, a university campus. My team was, first, was assigned to the New Mexico State University campus, and we had to come up with a plan to make the energy at um, New Mexico State be more directed to solar. And actually this was perfect to us because as you may already know, ASU is really big on solar. It would be a ways not to. So we had a bunch of people that could help us understand it better. Um, unfortunately, that was a year long project specifically because the competition was in April and I started in August. So um, unfortunately I couldn't complete it, but it was a very fun project to do. And it was also really interdisciplinary because the competition was a pretty holistic approach for us to take in terms of, of the finance part of it, the, um, you know, like the advertising to the university for them to actually take our design. We also had to come up with um, a battery and storage type of, uh, like the storage part to the solar energy, so not just the solar functionality, if that's making sense. So yeah, those were the two projects that I was in. Um, I really want to encourage every, anyone watching this to join EPICS. Um, I really want to do it again. I have a couple more semesters before I graduate, so I'm really hoping to be able to go back. Thanks, Adriana.
Okay, hi everyone. My name is Adisa Cervantes and I am from Chandler, which is just like 20 minutes south of uh, Tempe campus. And when I'm not in class, I am in 33 Buckets, Internet of Things team, and I'm a Fulton ambassador. And when I'm not in school, I also intern at Intel uh, part-time now. But so my team, 33 Buckets, they're a nonprofit organization that actually started out as an EPICS project, I believe, a couple years back. But so now there's about four teams, I think, uh, chlorine injection, sensor development, which Lucy is in. So she'll talk more about that. But Internet of Things. And then we have a new one. I think it's called Rainwater Harvesting System, just another way to get more water for these communities. Um, so my team, Internet of Things team, we real or these communities weren't having a sustainable way to check their water, um, the water in the reservoir. There's like two government officials that go by and check and make sure that their water is okay to drink. So our team, we want to make it accessible for everyone to see if their water is clean. Um, so we have created a, uh, a website where we get information from the sensor development team and we can post that on our website. We're still in the works of getting our device to send information to our website, but yeah, I started out, I started at uh, Epic's as a freshman my second semester because I just wanted to get more involved and I would highly highly recommend it because it is a lot of fun uh, working with different people and communities so yeah thanks Adisa Lucy all right so yeah like I said my name is Lucy um, when I'm not in class I am a Fulton ambassador I participated for two semesters in FURY, which is a research initiative, and then I'm also a TA. Um, but like Adisa started talking about, our team is focused in Peru and other rural areas where there isn't as much uh, consistent power, and also there's a lot of uh, contaminated drinking water. So when our team originally started, which was fall of 2019, so I think two and a half years ago, five semesters, um, we were partnered with 33 Buckets and there was no like feasible way to constantly measure the chlorine in the drinking water. So if you have too little chlorine in your drinking water, uh, people are drinking E. coli basically and getting really sick from it. If you have too much, then you're drinking chlorine. You know that tastes bad and that can also mess you up. So you want to hit right in the sweet spot of 2.5 milligrams per liter to 3 milligrams per liter. Um, but most of the cheap testing kits don't give you that numerical output. Instead, it's kind of like a pH strip. So you put a couple of reagents on there, you put some of your water and then you hold it up and it's greenish, bluish, and you kind of have to look at that and say, okay, should we put more chlorine in? You know, maybe we'll wait five minutes, see what happens. So our team is developing a sensor that will give you a cheap numeric output that won't rely on being plugged into an outlet or another steady power source since they're not really available in the third world and where we're looking to implement. Um, so we do that by applying a very small voltage across running water, and then we can determine the chlorine that's in the water from that. So a lot of research went into making sure that that was feasible, and we spent basically a semester and a half just doing research and very basic proof of concept testing. And then after that, we were able to develop our first sensor. We're now on our fourth sensor. So we've been through a couple of iterations, uh, like Dr. Lohman talked about. We, you know, we've gone through a few and that's why we've been around for so many semesters. But um, overall, our, our sensor is going to be implemented this summer. So hopefully if we get some good community feedback, um, this could be our last semester or maybe one or two more, and then we could actually be 
directly impacting that community in Peru and allowing them to have clean drinking water. Great. Thanks, Lucy. And thanks uh, to the rest of you. Those are really uh, great testimonials. Um, so there is a lot more information on our website, epics.engineering.asu.edu. So I encourage you to go to that website uh, if you want to see some more projects or some more information about our program. And of course, uh, if you would like to join EPICS in the spring, I mean, sorry, in the fall, uh, we have FSE 104 courses already uh, listed. I'll go ahead and uh, leave this page up for, for those of you that want to uh, go to the website. Any questions? There's something that I do want to add, if that's okay, that I um, mm -hmm. forgot to say when it was my time to talk. Um, so I cannot stress this enough. Epix is a huge opportunity, besides it being a, an awesome resume booster, but it really helped, at least it helped me a lot to kind of figure out what I want to do and what I like to do and what I like to work on more than other things. And um, when I had, had the opportunity to have an internship last summer and my Epix projects were the number one thing that I was asked about during my internships, because it's a great way for, it was a great way for me to show my, um, my, my skills and how I applied them and how I worked in a team. So just a tip. <laughs> yeah, you know, Adriana, that's a really good point. Um, one of the things that a lot of students, you know, we kind of get two different kinds of students. One student who's like, I'm a civil engineer. I'm going to be a civil engineer my whole life. I want to do a civil engineering project. And, and they, they gravitate to that. And then you have other people who are like, I'm an aerospace engineer. I'm going to do aerospace engineering my whole life. So this is my only opportunity to do, you know, to build a bridge or to build, you know, whatever. So to do some civil engineering projects or, or whatever. And so it's really an opportunity to kind of play with engineering. Right? It's, a, it's an opportunity to try on a few different things and see what you like. And so it's a, a terrific opportunity to, to do that exploring in a kind of safe and, and, and uh, you know, quick and effective way. Great point. Yeah, I think it also gives you an opportunity to uh, join together immediately as, a, as, an, as like a freshman, uh, tapping into a group of students that have been here uh, freshman through senior. And, and it gives you a great, great chance to uh, learn more from other students. And, and as uh, everybody's kind of been talking about it, engineering is uh, definitely a, a team sport. Everybody brings their different skill levels to the table. And, and uh, this is a great way for you to learn what, what, what it's going to be like in industry and, and elsewhere, uh, working together in teams. Um, please uh, put some questions if you have them in the uh, Q&A feature that we have here. Um, I think we still have, we have, we have seven attendees. So any questions for, for students or for Josh? And although we prefer EPICS, EPICS questions, if you just have questions in general that the students could answer, that would be great too. So while the attendees are thinking, I have a question. So I noticed that uh, Adriana, you said you had an internship. Adisa, you said you had an internship. Lucy, did you, I think you said you have an internship or no? I had an internship between my sophomore and junior year. And then this past summer I did an NSFRU. So kind of an internship, but more research-based. And, you know, I hear this from a lot of students that EPICS is, just as Adriana said, it's it's a really nice vehicle to get internships and also REUs and other kind of research experiences. Do you guys, were, was that impactful at all for you or was it the other way around maybe? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, tell me about the connections between the EPICS program and your internships. Okay, um, so my project, uh, to be honest, they had nothing to do with what I was doing for my internship. Um, but when I was interviewing for that company, they, they are all about how more than getting to the right question, they were very interested in the process of getting to the right question or the wrong question or whatever, I mean, answer, sorry. Uh, it, they were very interested about the process. So 
all of the questions that I had were pretty much behavioral and they were of the sort of like, um, tell me about a time where you had a team project and you had to, um, I don't know, split up the work or that you had a difficulty with one of the team members and how did you go about solving it and things like that. So to the work that I did in the internship, my projects were not related, but to what they were looking for in potential interns, it was completely related. Does that make sense? Yeah. And there, there are a couple of questions, uh, uh, Josh. One is, is there a cap on the number of students that can be involved in a particular project? Uh, yeah, so I, I see that now. Um, so there isn't a cap necessarily. We, we do try to keep teams kind of between a four and six uh, size. A three is sort of acceptable but small and two is probably getting way too small. Uh, seven, it really depends on the project, right? If we get to seven or eight students, we might do what the 33 buckets team teams have done, and that is kind of split them up into sub teams or um, or, or maybe even separate uh, uh, projects. Um, what, sometimes what we do is if we have one community partner that wants a whole lot of ideas, we might set it up as a kind of mini internal competition. So we'll get 12 students to come in, we'll get three teams of four and have their ideas compete against each other. And then a second question from Logan. Can you talk a little bit more about the Vietnam trip and how it ties to the GCSP global component? What does that mean? Thank yeah, you. <clears throat> right. So um, a global intensive experience is kind of a mini study abroad. So it's still run through the study abroad program. Uh, you can probably go and find uh, sort of historical information on, on the GIEs or you know other GIEs that have run. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll work on the project throughout the fall, and then we will go over the winter break. Uh, so we'll leave, I think right now we're, we're the plan is if, if the project goes forward that we would leave on, on December 28th, come back I think January 8th, so that's 10 days, in Vietnam working with our partners out there at uh, Da Nang University of Technology, um, and then um, doing field testing, doing an international design review. So we would do a design review, in which we would bring uh, local uh, and sort of regional business representatives and experts, as well as other faculty from the universities that we partner with there to do that uh, design review. And this, so a study abroad or a global experience that a study abroad kind of is, is one way for the Grand Challenge Scholars Program to kind of count one of the things that you need for that. And I don't remember all five. Let's see if I can remember. You need service learning, which EPICS counts for. So the, the Grand Challenge Scholars Program. Are any of you uh, students, are any of you GCSP? Okay, so you're not gonna, you, you may not know. Okay, so the Grand Challenge Scholars Program is a separate program for which you, uh, it's a program uh, run by the National Academy of Engineering, but we have a, a you know, one of the leading, uh, cohorts here at ASU. And there's five things that you need to satisfy and be a Grand Challenge Scholar. Uh, one is entrepreneurship, one is a global experience, one is service learning, one is research, and the fifth one is, I don't remember the fifth one. But EPICS in, in a variety of different ways counts for a whole lot of what you need to do to be a Grand Challenge Scholar. So three credits of EPICS counts as your service learning, Doing a study abroad, certainly a study abroad within EPICS counts as service learning or counts as your global component. Um, and then doing something like a FURY project would count as your research component. And so there's a lot of ways in which um, you can you can get connected. Count count the things you're doing in EPICS towards the things that you could be doing for the Grand Challenge Scholars program as well. One other thing I wanted to go back to, um, which I think Adriana was your point about, it's about how, you know, tell me about a time in which you've managed a team or had to split up your, your workload or, uh, you know, you had a problematic team member or whatever. One of the things that's really unique about the EPICS program that I think a lot of people don't either get or sort of really overlook is that all of our teams are not static. So we might start a team, just like Adriana, she said she started with the Solar District Cup team, but she didn't come back for that team. But, but that didn't just mean that we had five people and then we had four. We, we bring in new people every semester to existing teams. And that's a 
pro that, that's a project management challenge that you really don't get anywhere else, right? You're, if you're in a capstone, you're in a cohort. You're in your team one semester, you're in the same team the next semester. In epics, you could be on one team one semester, you could change to do something else the next semester. You could have new people join and it might be your responsibility, you know, one or two semesters from now to onboard them. And how many students who have graduated with their, you know, right out with their degree can say, I've onboarded new team members onto a multidisciplinary team, right? I've managed change management as part of a project. Like those are things that most engineers don't get to do for a few years. So it's a really incredible opportunity to get that kind of hands-on and sort of project management experience, um, teaming experience that you uh, have a hard time finding really anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would imagine, Josh, that that is exactly what it's going to look like in industry. If you get a better job, you need to train the people that are coming in to do the old job. And you know. Absolutely. Understanding project management and change management and kind of engineering management is not just for the managers, right? It's for everybody. And uh, anybody that wants to be on a team and pretty much all of engineering is, is teamwork now. So... The sooner you can get experience and get get good at working in teams, the better off you will be for your whole career. Other questions or, or our students, if you have anything else you'd like to add. And Josh, did you want me to plug in um, that flyer? Uh, yeah. Or, or into the chat feature maybe? Yeah, let me... Um... I don't have it uh, in a PDF right now, but it is just this, um, this is the front and back of the flyer. So um, if you are interested in signing up, these are the dates. Uh, it doesn't matter what section of 104 you are in. When we get closer to the fall, the way the project sorting will work <clears throat> is we'll have all of our new projects that we've sourced over the summer. We'll have all of our existing projects that we're holding on to that we're still working on now. And we're going to send out a survey and we have an algorithm that will ask you some questions about your your preferences what's your first choice second choice third choice project what's your first choice time second choice time uh to do kind of a meeting with the team and then we'll go ahead and we run that algorithm you get matched up to a team hopefully it's a team that you want to be matched up to most students get their first choice um Almost every student, I think this last time we had 400 and not this semester, but last semester we had 417 students. I think two students didn't get one of their preferences. And we actually just caught like get, shot them an email and said, hey, this is the situation. You know, is there something else you'd want to do? And they ended up really happy on on a different project. So um, we, we really strive for students to be passionate about the work that they do in the EPICS program. And part of that means being on a project that makes sense for you. Maybe if you have a, if you have your cell phone with you, go ahead and take a picture of this. What would be good ideas is, is uh, you students that are planning on coming in the fall is to have sort of a picture of this flyer that you can bring with you to orientation where, where you're going to be signing up for your, your, your classes for the fall. And uh, you can kind of you know, figure out how it's fitting in with your with your other courses when you're working with your advisor. Yeah. And I don't know, um, Mike, do you have a place on the website, your website where you post media like that? I mean, I can send you the, we have a couple of the flyers because this one's actually a flyer to the uh, yeah. I've got your, I mean, I've got your epics website up. I don't know if that that wouldn't have it. Thanks, Logan. Ooh. I can't seem to do it. I can't find any way to do that right now, Josh. Well, that's okay. I think it, it'll be on our website. So as long as they yeah, take a screenshot of that, uh, that page um, or visit our website, we'll put the flyer up. This flyer just got made this morning. So 
And all you should have to do, even if you didn't have this flyer, when you're talking to your advisor and you're registering for your first set of courses, just, just let them know, I'd really like to enroll in, in EPICS. And then they'll have, they'll have the schedule for the courses with them as well. Yeah. Or you can just, yeah, search on the course uh, search site for FSE 104. It's the only 104 uh, designation, so. Well, thank you very much, Josh and students. Um, uh, very informative. I always learn a lot uh, in these sessions too. So um, uh, anything else for the good of the cause? No, I think that's uh, that covers it for us. Thank you so much, students, for uh, for coming and uh, sharing your experience. Well done.